Nope, not that one. CS106L. Okay, I have like zero file organization, so it's all over the place. <laughs> um, move, move.pdf, there we go. Okay, and then code, and that's it. We only need those. Cool. Should I start with in place Mac? Okay, I'll start with the in place back. Okay, so hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about move semantics, which is um, out of all the lectures I lecture, this is probably like the coolest one, and uh, and this is a very modern topic. It this feature only came out um, nine years ago, eight nine years ago. So this is a very modern, very new topic. And what I love about it is it encapsulates like one of the biggest philosophies of C plus plus: don't sacrifice efficiency be as fast and as efficient as possible. Okay, So move semantics will be covering that. But first, I want to quickly just do an aside. Um, yeah, So today we're going to talk about this thing called L versus R values. By the way, last time I said that this is also a really conceptually hard topic. Um, is, is everyone super prepared today? Everyone's brought their A game. Everyone's good today? OK. I slept 10 hours last night, so, so, like, so like I am like ready. Is that truly in preparation for this lecture? Sure. <laughs> sure. Okay, we're all ready? We're all, we're all not sleep deprived? Okay. Yeah, then we'll talk about the move constructor and assignment, which is which are the, um, the close cousins of the copy constructor and assignment. Then we'll talk about this thing called the swap. So um, we're going to implement a, a swap function, which is like a really, really good swap function. Not the, not the normal swap function that you usually write, but like a really, really good swap function that does not make extra copies. Then, uh, if we have time, uh, we'll talk about perfect forwarding. Although, um, as I was making the slides, I was about I made like two slides. Then I'm like, yeah, we're never getting to this point, so I stopped. Okay, but if we do, then I'll talk about it. It's really, really, really cool. But I have no slides for that, so I'll just type code. Cool. Before we get to that, I want to really talk about M place back. So if you go on uh, CPP reference, CPP reference, you'll see in vector that oh, not operator vector. In CPP reference, if you look at vector, you'll notice there are two really similar methods. One is called pushback, and one's called mplaceback. Right, has anyone ever used mplaceback? It's a weird function to use. OK, so pushback is exactly what you think it is. So pushback, I'm just going to open pushback. Uh, pushback, basically, it takes in some value. Um, this, is a, this is a template class, which Anna will cover next week. But essentially, you just put your value in, and it's added into the vector. Okay, that's what you've been doing for um, the entirety of 106B. But mplaceback has this super weird argument: arg two ampersands and then three uh, and then three dots after that. Okay, we're not going to talk about the three dots. The, um, the, that's called a, a erratic template. We were going to cover it, but then we ran out of time like three weeks ago. So uh, that's called a erratic template. Basically, this func this function accepts a variable number of arguments. Okay, it, it's not like it doesn't just take in two arguments or three arguments. You can put in any number of arguments. Okay. Now, um, what's special about this is the the two ampersands, and I'll talk about that today. But I quick, just want to quickly talk about what m place back does. M place back solves a weird problem where if you want to add something to your vector, right? That you, usually you can just put that value in there and you're done. Okay. So for example, if you have a vector of patients. How would you add a patient to the vector? You would create a patient and then call that patient uh, the vector dot push back that patient, right? Okay. But the thing is, think about how many copies of that patient you're creating, right? You have to initially create a, a patient object, then you have to put it into the vector, which creates another copy, which is then that's kind of inefficient, right? Why do you have to create this like dummy patient initially before you put it into the the Vector itself. So what M place back does is, is instead of having you create the patient itself, you can pass in the arguments needed to create the patient. And then what the vector does is it creates the patient in place inside the vector for you directly. OK, that was kind of long. Just let me re repeat that one more time. Normally, when you have a patient and you want to add it to a vector, you have to first create a patient object, then call pushback on that patient which creates another patient objects within that vector. 
right? So right now you have two copies of the patient. You have the original patient, and then you also have um, a copy of that patient, which is inside the vector. These are separate ones. Agree? But the thing is, if you're just adding a, a patient to a vector, and you don't really need that first patient, then why not just have the vector directly create the patient in, within the vector without even starting with an initial vector, right? How do you initialize a patient? You give it a priority and a name. Instead of creating a dummy patient with the priority and name, then copy it in, uh, copying it into the vector. Instead, just give the name and the patient to the vector, and the vector will create the patient for you inside. Right? The key part is there's no, this, there's no extra copy here. Okay? That's what mPlaceback does. And the reason why it takes a variable number of arguments is because um, you, you pass in all the arguments needed to call the constructor for whatever you're creating. So for a, patient, for a vector of patients, you would pass in the name and the priority. OK, pretty cool, right? OK, th this is the, based on the whole philosophy. Don't make extra copies if you don't need to. And that's what M place back does. So if you look at the example over here, oh, wow, we have a vector of presidents. Uh, I'm not, this is a, I'm trying to figure out where the M place back is. OK, here. So here, you can see that to create, we have a vector of presidents. And a president has a name, a country, and a an year, right? One way you can, uh, you can uh, push a president into the vector is you can, do, you can call the constructor here, which creates an object, and then it passes that object to um, the vector, which creates another copy of it to put into the vector. Instead, what you can do is you can just pass in the parameters, the, the arguments needed to create a patient, not a patient, a president, pass it to uh, the vector, and the vector will create the, the president for you instead directly into the vector. OK? Just want to briefly mention it. In case we get to perfect forwarding at the very end, we can explain how to implement this. But we won't get to that, so I'm just going to put it out there and place back. That's how it works. Question, yeah. Uh -huh. It feels like in terms of readability and when you're scaling your project upwards, it, I mean, if, if I'm a new developer coming in and I'm reading this, I'm, it doesn't make sense to me immediately that you're creating and that these are all parameters required by this president object. Mm -hmm. Is this a, considered a best practice? Mm -hmm. out Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, this is this is definitely considered a, a good practice in industry, and the reason for that is because um, you can you can take a look at what elections is, and then um, you can figure out like what its type is, and that will tell you exactly what the parameters you have to pass in are. Uh, yeah. The reason for this is not for readability purposes; it's for uh, efficiency purposes, right? So imagine instead of a president, which is just a small struct, imagine we had a gigantic vector, right? The alternative would be create this gigantic vector make a copy of it, and put it into the vector. Instead of that, we're just going to create the gigantic vector directly, um, directly by giving it the arguments to that vector. Okay. All right. I don't want to waste too much time on this, but this is just uh, an FYI. This is why this method exists. I didn't, I didn't understand this method until like recently, but this is a really cool function. Normally, for like vector of ints, because int doesn't really require a constructor, it's just you literally just pass in the int. So for a vector of ints, both push back and m place back do the exact same thing, okay? But for larger objects, m place back, basically, what m place back is doing is it's taking the arguments and it's forwarding it to a constructor which, which creates the object in the vector, okay? This idea is called perfect forwarding. It's for forwarding the arguments for you to a constructor, okay? We're, gonna, we're not gonna talk about for perfect forwarding because we don't have time, but FYI that it exists and this is what makes this function more efficient. Question, yeah. Wait, when you say in place back for, like, for the int, you said, like, it doesn't make a difference when mm -hmm. it's just echoing place back? Yeah, because for an int, um, there's not, like, a real efficiency difference, right? It's just you, you, you make a copy of the int, you put it you into. You have to make the copy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. You're saying, like, this copy is just for, but I think that would just not matter much? Not really. Like, uh, because like for ints, ints don't really, like a constructor for an int, you pass in an int and you get the same int back. Right? So the constructor of an int doesn't really do much. It just takes an int and it returns an int. Okay. Yeah. So for ints, it doesn't matter. But for like larger objects where the constructor takes in different parameters, that's where int placeback works. OK. Exact same. Exact same. Exact same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and this just solves a really annoying problem where like you sometimes have you like um, let's say let's think for n grams for n grams you you had to create like an initial vector, and then you put it into the map, right? Instead, think about if you can skip that initial copy and just go, just create it directly inside the map. 
Okay, I don't want to waste too much time on this because it's not super important, but just wanted to say that exists. Okay, move semantics. Last week we briefly talked about um, the the um, special member functions. So the default constructor, the copy constructor, copy assignment, and destructor. Okay, and last time we implemented the constructor and destructor for string vector. You should all know how to do this from 106B. Uh, we briefly talked about what the copy constructor and copy assignment have to do, and uh, we implemented them. The key idea is if you have like one of those pointers, which um, itself has a it, it has sole ownership over the array. You can't just do a copy of the pointer because then both pointers are pointing to the same array. Instead, you have to make a deep copy of that array, which is what's being done over here, right? We're creating um, a completely separate copy of the array and we're copying all the elements to that new array. So that if you change one of the arrays, the other vector's array isn't changed. Uh, for the, the copy assignment, Everything is, is the same with two exceptions. One is you have to remember to free the resources of the old existing object because you're overwriting it. So you have to make sure you free the stuff in that one. Basically, it's a destructor. And then you also have to make sure you don't self-assign. So if, if I assign A equals A, that should work. A should not just not do anything. OK, cool. We could briefly talk about the rule of three. Uh, and then let's quickly talk about the problems of copying. So I briefly went over this last time, but here's a challenge. Take a look at this piece of code and uh, talk with a partner. Tell me how many times each special member function is called. Okay, So there's four special member functions. In this small piece of code, how many times are those special member functions called for string vector? Okay, And then we actually run the code, and we'll see if you're correct. So I'll give you one minute. Talk to a partner. Think about how many times each one is called. Oh, uh, with or without, and uh, assume no, um, assume no copy, uh, copy elision. If you don't know what that is, that's totally fine. Just pretend that doesn't exist. Oh, sorry, this is not find all words. It's find names. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> totally forgot about that. It's find names. Read names. Read names. Okay. Okay. Y you know what? That's this is too hard. I'm just gonna do this. Uh, Main.cpp. Okay. Here's the function. <laughs> Use this instead. Uh, and uh, so one, one, my bad. Do read. What was it? It was. Okay. Do this. And then name two equals read names. Five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four. There we go. Okay. How many times are is the are the special member functions? Ow! Special member functions called. to make it more technically correct. All right, anyone have an answer? Not sure. Okay, let's just yeah. So this is tricky, but let's check our answers. So um, just to show you uh, what, what what's happening right now, I'm going into uh, vector string vector .cpp, and notice that in all of these uh, constructors, I wrote this line: "Hello from default constructor, hello from a fill constructor, hello from copy constructor, and hello from copy assignment." Uh, actually, I have to comment this out. This is what we're writing today, but I have to comment that out first. Um, Okay, and then inside string vector .cp, uh, .h, we have the special member functions ignore these two. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to run um, this command. Oops, I had to run make first. Make. Okay, and then I'm going to run this command. Don't worry what, the, what it does, but it basically just times everything, and it also figures out how many times each one is called. Oh, okay, I'm missing one more thing. Okay, one sec. That was not supposed to happen. 
have to... Okay, and then I told you ignore copy elision, so I'm gonna write, okay, do not do copy elision. I'm gonna change this to C11. Okay, cool. Let's try that one more time. And let's just call move. Okay, so there's a co there's a fill constructor, there's a copy constructor, there's a destructor, copy constructor, default constructor, fill constructor, copy constructor, destructor, copy assignment, destructor, destructor, destructor. Are you done? Okay, there we go. That's uh, that's all the ones being called. And uh, let's see. Uh, I don't want to run the command again. Okay, but um, the, take a look at how many times each one was called. The destructor was called six times. Sorry, what's the fill constructor? Is that the right one? Oh yeah, so fill constructor is not a special member function. It's it's just this constructor. Vector.cpp. It's this constructor. The one which is not, not it's not the default one, but it just takes in uh, the number of elements and the and the default value. Yeah, it's the one that's being used over here. The one that's being used over here. Okay, so that's, that's counts, okay? So uh, we call read names, which comes over here. What constructor is called over here? Fill. fill constructor, okay. What happens over here? We return names. Yeah, we have to make a copy, we have to call the copy constructor because when you are returning a value, you're creating a copy of that local variable, right? Names only exist in the local variable, but you have to make a copy for to appear inside main. So we call the copy constructor uh, what's happening over here? We set name one equal to whatever this vector was. Okay, this is a copy constructor, remember, because this is uh, this itself is constructing a new object. So even though you see an equal sign, this is actually a copy constructor. Okay, a question? Yeah. Um, did the names and the read names get destructed? Yes. Yeah, good point. So right after the copy constructor happens, names is de de destroyed, which is why when you initially look, you see, okay, fill constructor, copy constructor, and then this destructor is saying, okay, the local variable in names is gone. Okay, let's keep going. Read names, so that reads um, a certain number of names. Um, this is a vector. This is a copy constructor because we're constructing v1. What's called over here? Default, Default constructor, okay. Um, okay, then we call renames again. Same thing over here. We call a uh, fill constructor. We call the copy constructor. Then we call a destructor on names. This is now a vector. What happens over here? Copy, copy assignment, because names name two exists, so we're replacing whatever was in name two with this new vector over here. Okay. Finally, what happens at the very end? Yeah. Uh, so name one is gone. Name two is gone. Right, six total. Oh, by the way, um, also, this is technically a vector. So once this line is done, this object is gone. So you also have to call the destructors on, the, on these two temporary objects. Okay, does that make sense? So just to recap, where are all six destructors? Where's the, where, where, where's the first destructor called? Yeah, re after return names, this one is gone. Where's the second destructor called? Yeah, so when this temporary object is gone, we call a destructor on that temporary object, so two. Where's the third destructor? Uh, yeah, in return names, yeah, we, we have to call a destructor on, the, on names, so three. Where's the fourth one? Okay, read names, this is a temporary vector, so after this line is gone, that vector is also gone. So four, and then where, where's five and six? Yeah, name one itself is a vector, name two is a vector, you have to destruct all six. All right, cool, right? Okay, how many copies did we make? That's a lot of copies. Uh, one, two, three, four. We made four copies. Okay, so that's kind of a bummer. Um, can we do better? So last time I briefly talked about this thing called copy elision, which essentially is uh, when you return a value, sometimes the compiler is able to skip that con copy constructor. It knows that you're gonna return a vector anyways. So when you initially declare that vector inside, um, inside when you initially declare this names vector, it knows that you're gonna return it anyways. So when it creates the vector, it creates it in here directly. Does that make sense? Okay, so if I turn copy a legion on, so we ignore this and we turn it to C17. By the way, in C17, copy a legion is guaranteed. So your compiler will basically make your code faster for you. You don't even have to, to ask it to. We do that and um, actually let's do this. Okay, 
and then uh, this this does the same thing except it times it and it also um, it times it and it also basically collapses everything so it counts how many times each one appeared. So okay, there you go. So this took nine seconds and um, it called the copy assignment once. It called the default constructor once. It called three destructors and it called two fill constructors. What do you notice in this in this run? Okay, half the destructors are gone, which means there's also half of the constructors are also gone. Which which half of the constructors are gone? The yeah, the copy constructors are gone, and specifically, it's the it's the copy constructors for um, this return names, right? Return names itself has to make a copy to to be able to copy the local one over here, but because of copy elision. Uh, the compiler is smart enough to know that when you create this vector, it's just going to create the vector over here. So you don't even have to make a copy of it. Okay? And uh, there's a significant speed up. I think the other one was like 16 seconds. Now it's 9 seconds. Okay? Today, we're going to do better. And what part about doing, uh, what part here can we do better? The better it part we can do is the copy assignment. Right? Because notice here, what do you notice about, um, there should still be one copy constructor. Huh. OK, so I guess it also, oh, uh, it skipped a copy constructor. OK, it's, I think it skipped this copy constructor since it knew that you were going to assign it anyways. OK, the key part is how do we make this line better? Right? Because this itself is a vector. Read names, this itself is a vector. It's the same vector, but you're just moving. You're essentially copying this vector over to name two. So now you have two copies of the vector. That's kind of a bummer because this vector over here is going to be gone like in the very next second. This is a temporary vector that was returned, but it's going to be gone anyways right after this line. Right? The destructor is going to be called. So why are we still copying everything over if this is literally going to be gone? Can we instead take whatever was here and put it into new name2 without doing any copying? All right? That's the goal of today. Is everyone with me so far? This is super important, OK? You can see that why this is a temporary object, and it's going to be gone the very next second. So instead of wasting that, why don't we just move everything from here into name two? This is going to be gone anyways. All right. But the thing is, just a quick question, which is, OK, suppose I, re suppose I briefly change the, the code so that it's like this. And then, and then, so I essentially catch it in name three, and then I do name three equals name two equals name three. So it's the exact same code. Instead, uh, instead of putting this line over here, I instead putting it in a separate variable. Okay, here, can we still try to steal whatever is in name two? Can we steal it and put it into name three? Why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in why not? Yeah, exactly. Because name three here, we, it, it, we might want to do something else with it. Right? This is not a temporary value. This is a little different because after this line is done, name three still exists. It's still a valid vector. So we can't just steal its, its vector and put, we can't just steal its array and put it into name two. Right? Uh, the, uh, the example, of, as opposed to the other example where here, this vector is going to be gone regardless. So we can safely steal from it. It's going to be gone the very next second. OK, so now, now the question is, OK, how do we differentiate between those two? One where the, val the vector is a temporary vector, so we can safely steal from that vector. The other case is where the other vector is not a temporary vector. It is, a, it is an actual vector that can still be used. We can't steal from that. How do we differentiate between these two? OK, and we're going to talk about this thing called L versus R values. All right, so this is a gross simplification of a super complicated topic. And um, if you talk to anyone who's an expert in C++, they will be very, really mad if you try to explain this to them. All right, so this is a super gross simplification. But the thing is, um, this is good enough for you to write good code. Right? You don't have to know the semantics of uh, there's this thing called a GL value. There's this thing called a PR value. There's this thing called an, an X value. We're not going to talk about all that. We're going to talk about two very simple classes. So this. Um, uh, a quick definition, an L value is an expression that has a name and identity. 
okay? Because it has a name and identity, you can find the address of that, that value using the address of operator, okay? While an R value is an expression that does not have a name or identity. These are temporary values, okay? And because they're temporary values, you cannot use the address of operator to find their, um, to find their, the address of operator. Okay, and um, so intuitively, this is not technically true if you want to get super pedantic about it, but intuitively that the um, intuition you can have is an L value is something that can appear on the left or right hand side of, of an equal sign, but an R value can only appear on the right hand side. Okay, does it make sense why an R value can't appear on the left hand side? Okay, if you have a temporary value, you can't set that temporary value to something. Okay, for example, if you had, uh, if I just wrote the, the integer three, that three is not assigned to any variable, so it's like a temporary value. You can't assign three to something. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, so quick examples. Okay, so these, these get increasingly tricky. All right, so I want you to tell, tell me, look at both sides of the equal sign. Are they L values or R values? Okay, so first one. Two, is that an R value or L value? R value, right? It's a, it's a temporary value. It doesn't have an address. Two doesn't have an address. So this is an R value. How about the vowel? No. L value, right? Because vowel has a name, vowel, and it also has a, a address. Right? You, you can do ampersand vowel to get its address. Everyone with me so far? OK, next. This weird address, R value or L value? R value, right? So th this is also a temporary uh, object. After this line, I can't reuse whatever was here. And um, even though this is an address, you can't find the address of that, that expression. Right? It's the same thing as over here. You can't find the address of 2, because 2 is not like an actual thing that, that exists in memory. So you can't find the address of this either. What's pointer? L value or R value? L value, right? Because can you, can you find the address of pointer? Yeah, sure you can, right? It's just uh, do ampersand pointer. You'll get um, the address of where that pointer exists. OK, uh, one, two, three. These are R values. What's V1? L, L value, right? Because it has a name, has, a, has an identity. OK, now it gets really tricky. What's V1? Is V1 an L value or an R value? V1 is an, R, is an L value. Let me, re let me repeat that for the recording. V1 is an L value because it has a name, has an identity. You can find the address of where V1 lives. Okay, same for V2. What's V1 plus V2? L value or R value? R, R value, right? V1 plus V2 returns a vector, but this vector is a temporary value, right? It's just floating. It's just a value that's returned by the function. There, it does not actually live inside a memory address. All right, so v1 plus v2 is an r value. It's a temporary value which is gone the very next line. Right, think about it, right? You can't access whatever v1 plus v2 was inside this line unless, well, v4 is a copy of it. What's v4? L value. L value. OK, and just, just as a quick tip, basically everything on the left-hand side is an L value here. All right? OK, v1 plus equals v4. L, L value. What about, what about v4? L, L value. OK. Uh, size t underscore t uh, size equals v dot size. What's size? L value, right? It's on the left hand side. It has a name, has an identity. What's v dot size? V dot size is, a, is an r value because v dot size is a temporary value, right? It's, it's, uh, it's an integer returned by a function, but that is a temporary value. It doesn't live, live, in, live anywhere. You can't find the address of that. Okay, super, super tricky. Uh, size, what's size? L value, size has a name, has an identity. What's size, but you cast it to an int? It's an R value, right? Because it's size, but you cast it to another type. But that, new, that expression with that new type does not, live any, does not have its own memory address. So it's a temporary value. It's an R value. Make sense? OK, val is an R value, of course. Uh, what's 4 times i? R value, right? I, I itself is an L value, but if you multiply it by 4, there's no memory address that has um, the value 4 times I in it, so that's an L. That's an R value. Basically, if you can't give it a name, like you can't give it a variable name, then it's an R value. OK, 
Um, what's okay? V one bracket one. L value or R value? L. So you know it's an L value. Why is it an L value? Okay. So here, here's a common uh, misconception. If it's a value returned by a function, like over here, v dot size, v dot size is an R value, but v one bracket one is an R value, but they're both things returned by functions. Why? Yeah, v v v one bracket one is an L value. Why is v one bracket one, in, which is something returned by a function? Why is that an L value? But why is v dot size an R value? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So v so the bracket operator, if you remember, it returns a character by reference, not a character. It returns the the element by reference. So since you're returning it by reference, whenever you use v one bracket one, you're referring to an actual variable. You're referring to an actual string inside the vector. So that is an L value. Okay. But v dot size that is returned, it just returns a size underscore t, not a size underscore t ampersand. So it returns a temporary value size t. OK, uh, final ones. <laughs> Address of val, r value or l value? r value, right? This is an address, but it itself, the address itself does not have an address. OK, you can't say ampersand val equals something. That's, that, means, that just means setting an address. You can't do that. You can't say ampersand val equals something. Uh, pointers and L value, and uh, if you dereference something, okay, ooh, tricky. What is ampersand pointer? L value or R value? So I'm hearing an L value. Any votes for R value? Quick question: Can you do am Can you do um, asterisk pointer equals something? Is that valid? Yeah, right, you're just dereferencing and setting whatever is there to another value. So address of pointer, that is, in, that is a yeah. L value, yes. <laughs> Should we just use the left and right? <laughs> <laughs> OK, L value. OK, why is this important? Oh, here are the answers, just in case you want to check. Uh, OK, we'll skip why is that important until the next slide. OK, now there's this, these things called L value references and R value references. Okay, so before we talked about this thing called an L value reference. An L value reference is a reference to an L value, right? Like before we did, when we did this thing, pointer two is basically another name for pointer. You can change pointer two and it does the same thing to pointer. Does that make sense? Okay, we've seen this multiple times. When you do pass by reference, that's, that's how it works where you're creating a reference to the original variable. Any changes you make to pointer two is changing pointer. Make sense so far? Let's pause for a moment. Any questions at this point? Because it, it gets more and more confusing if you, we don't uh, solve uh, any uh, conceptual issues right now. So any questions right now? Do you want me to re-explain anything? Anyone falling asleep? OK. Now, the thing is, you can't make an L value reference to an R value. L value references only bind to L values. All right. But what you can do is you can bind an R value to an R value reference. This is called an R value reference. Okay, what it does is it basically just extends the lifetime of this. This is normally supposed to be gone the very next line, but by doing by attaching a, an R value reference to this, you've basically extended its lifetime. Any change you make to L to V4 will change this op, this temporary object. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the double ampersand means this is an R value reference, not an L value reference. I'm using auto here, but you can actually you can use like the, the, the types themselves. So you can do um, this would be an int star ampersand. This would be a vector of int ampersand ampersand. Okay. Cool. Uh, this is not okay because you can't. This is a R value. You can't bind an L value reference to an R value. Similarly, you can't bind a R value reference to an L value. What you can do, though, this is a weird exception. You can bind a const L value reference to an R value. Okay, and you'll you'll see this uh, this error a lot if you do something like this. You might have seen this before, where if you tried to pass a temporary like R value to here, right? The if you pass it as an L value to a L value uh, reference, this does not compile. The, this fourth line does not compile. 
But if you pass it as a const reference, that compiles. Has anyone just ever seen this, this error before? Okay. Yeah. Um, this, this happens more common in uh, Keith quarter, next quarter. Yeah, because Keith really likes, uh, likes uh, temporary values. So Keith will, next quarter, you'll see a lot of these errors, but not this quarter. Okay, but um, just to go back, yeah. So you can bind a const L value reference to a temporary value. Why does, it, why does that make sense? Why does a non-const L value not work, but a const val L value does bind to an R value? Any guesses? Yeah, go ahead. Uh -huh. If it's like non-const, then when you, when you modify the L value, you're modifying like the temporary thing. Mm -hmm. You're not like really supposed to modify the temporary thing. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it's constant, like who cares if it's you know, technically the same thing, you're just not going to modify it anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So here, it doesn't make sense if we can modify V here. Because if we modify V here, then we're modifying this temporary expression. Okay, unless you explicitly say yes, I want the temporary expression and I do want to modify it, then it lets you. Okay, but if you just say, oh, I just want a regular L value, then um, that would not work. But if it's const, then you can modify it since even though it's a temporary value, but it, you're not changing it anyways, so that's fine. Okay, all right. Why do we care? Uh, just let me pause for one second. Any questions so far? This is super important. Yes, question. Mm -hmm. I guess yeah. My question is kind of that. Which is, is all of this analysis aimed at um, efficiency? Mm -hmm. Because like so far in my C++ program, I've never had to think about this. Mm -hmm. But maybe I'm making efficiency, uh, or not making my code as efficient as possible mm -hmm. by not paying attention to the very specific like instances of when something is an L or an R value. Mm -hmm. But is there something beyond that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about next, which is uh, move operations. The, the idea is that. Our values are temporary values. So they're, they're going to die really soon. You can steal its resources. That sounded really dark. Um, <laughs> that, that sounded really dark. But uh, yes, it's, um, the temporary values are not going to exist anymore. So you can take its resources, no problem. But if it's an L value, that means that address has a name, has an identity, which means someone else might be using it later, which means you cannot steal from an L value. You can steal from an R value, but you can't steal from an L value. Because our values are going to be gone really soon. So you can steal from it, no problem. Yeah, it, it, is, it is for efficiency. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and it goes back to like the whole thing about uh, one of the core goals of C++ being to allow programmers to have the utmost control possible and to allow them to program for efficiency. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, yeah, and you can imagine that efficiency can be important. Um, people usually use C++ because it's like embedded devices or things like that, where efficiency is really one of the big ones. But yeah, a, as you said, like, you, you, I mean, you, you may have noticed as you were programming in C++ for all of your life up until now, you've never had to really worry about like move semantics or things like mm -hmm. that. So, yeah. 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 This is a very advanced C++ um, topic. Most C++, most people at Stanford won't know what move semantics are. Yeah. This was developed literally like eight years ago. All right. Cool. So another way to phrase it is an L value is not disposable. It has a name. It has an identity. You can't just, it's not a disposable value. You can't steal from it. An R value is disposable, right? An R value is a temporary object. It's going to be gone really soon anyways. So you can take its resources. You can steal stuff from it. Other way to phrase that is you can copy from an L value, but you cannot move from an L value. While for an R value, you can either copy or move. And preferably, you want to move. It's cheaper to take its resources rather than look at what resources it has and then copy it on your own. Does that make sense? OK. Uh, so today we're going to introduce the two new, um, new uh, special member functions, the move constructor and the move assignment. All right, notice the key difference. The copy constructor creates a new uh, object from an existing L value, while the move constructor creates a new object from an existing R value. Because it's an R value, the move constructor can move the stuff from the R value to itself without worrying about the R value. Make sense? Give me a nod if it makes sense. Okay, any questions at this point? If not, we're, we're going to start coding. Okay, so the function signatures look like this. Um, I just added these in the no accepts to make sure that, oh, we're not throwing exceptions with them. But I did some research. Apparently, you don't need them. I'm not super sure. I don't think you need them. But 
they're not supposed to throw an exception anyway, so I'm just going to put that there. Um, cool. So notice the um, the move, the copy constructor and assignment, they take in a const ref L value reference, but the move ones take a regular R value. Okay, cool. So key steps for a move constructor. It's the same thing, except uh, instead of copying all the elements, we can just move everything over. Okay, so for example, think about what happens inside a vector. Uh, actually, let me un vim vec nah, string vector dot h. Let me uncomment these. The these are the two, the two functions we're going to write. Vim string vector dot cpp. Okay, anyway, we're going to write this function. Actually, I wrote it already, so let's just look at it. Okay, what's special about this is, um, let's see, move control. Okay, so notice that, okay, oops, I skipped a step. Sorry, y'all, this was not supposed to be there yet. Okay, so here is how, uh, how you would implement something like this. You would say, okay, well, um, elements is a pointer. We're just going to make a copy of that pointer. Logical size, make a copy of logical size. Allocated, make a copy of allocated. Basically, copy everything over. <coughs> Why is it move in this case? Because instead of creating our new array like we did before, we're taking the pointer that other had, copying it to ourselves, and then we're saying, OK, other, uh, y that array doesn't belong to you anymore. Set it to null pointer. OK, does that make sense? The key difference is instead of cop creating a new pointer and copying all the elements over, we're stealing the pointer from other. And that array is now our own. OK, um, I have, a, I have, a, uh, I have an animation, but it's for the assignment one. So let me talk about the assignment one. Uh, why are these here? And the annoying thing is I have to retype them later, because that comes next. So I have to delete these. OK, so move assignment does the, the same thing as well, except you have to do an extra check, which means you have to first delete the, you have to delete the array that's the string vector that's being er erased. We're overwriting the elums. We copy everything over, copy the pointer over, and then RHS doesn't have the pointer anymore. Let me uh, do a simulation of that. So before we have this, this is, uh, OK, this is not unnamed return value. This is other. Uh, my, my apologies. I copied the slides over, and I forgot to change it. But here, OK, so instead, what we're doing is we're first deleting what the old vector had. Right, that's what, that's what this line does. We copy the logical size and the uh, allocated size over to words. Then we copy the pointer over. So this pointer now points over here. And then we say, OK, other. That array doesn't belong to you anymore. Set that pointer to null pointer. And now your this ob vector now has sole ownership over the vector itself. We never copied anything. We just moved everything over. OK, so this is the code for that. Um, yeah, this is the code for that. OK, this is not perfect yet. And there's one issue with this. Actually, can anyone see what the issue with this is? Is this really moving everything? There are still some copies being made. Not of the vector itself. Not, not of the array itself, but something else is being copied. Can you see what it is? Yeah, uh-huh. Um, sorry, I, I heard someone say something. What did you say? Yeah, uh-huh. The allocated size and logical size? Mm -hmm. These are all copies, right? Okay, you might, okay, you'll probably think, okay, this is an int, so copying an int, that's no real big deal. Uh, copying a pointer, okay, that's not a huge deal. Right, but these are copies. What if, we, what if we had a more extreme example? So let's just look at some other class, another class called Access. It has a vector of students. All right, then if we wanted to um, do a move operation, we would do something like this. All right, students equals rhs.students. This is a copy. This equal sign is a copy. Why is it a copy?
I think I skipped ahead of myself a little, but the question is, this is a copy because rhs.students, is that an L value or an R value? Is it, is it, is it an R value? Does it, it's an L value. It has a name, it has an identity, it has a lo, uh, memory address. What's super confusing is that even though we say, okay, this is an R value, we're saying that RHS binds to an R value. Okay, but RHS itself is an L value. Does that make sense? LHS, uh, uh, RHS is binding to a R value, so whatever, whatever access is passed in, that is an R value. But RHS inside this, this function, RHS has a name, has an identity, it's an L value. So when you do something like this, this makes a copy, which is not okay. Okay? Yeah, in the, uh, in the example over here, RHS over here for our vector, this is an L value. So all these are copies. Okay, now uh, it's more severe over here because we're actually copying all the students. So what do we do? If, this, if only this were an R value, then this would be a move operation. Any ideas? How would you, how would you turn this into an R value? You can cast it to an R value, okay? And that's where this um, <laughs> that's where this move function comes in. RHS is a L value, but we want it to be an R value so that uh, so that when you do the equal sign, students will be copied over. So here we want to make this. We do this STD move. What move does is it, it takes whatever parameter you pass in and it returns the R value of it, okay? It unconditionally casts a variable to an R value. So now, this is now a move operation because um, whatever this class looks at, it says, oh yeah, whatever um, the copy assignment you're doing, that copy, that, um, that RHS that you passed in is an R value. Does this make sense? Yeah, the most confusing part is why is this an L value? Isn't it an R value reference? The R value reference binds to an R value, but the R value reference itself is an L value because it has a name, it has an identity. So what move does is it basically overrides that and it says treat this as a temporary value. What it means is if you call move on anything, you should not use whatever you called move on. All right, you, you already, you're treating it as a temporary. We're assuming that after this point in the code, we're not gonna use RHS anymore. Okay. So uh, that's the code over there. Uh, let me just quickly modify the code. So the code, the only difference is you have to add uh, SCD move to all of these so to make sure that you're moving all of them. Technically, these are like int values, so this doesn't make a huge difference, but um, whenever you write um, code for, uh, where you have to copy other members, you have to make sure you have to call move on all of them. So here, you have to do move on all of these. Okay, any questions? Okay. And that, uh, <laughs> interesting. Okay, well, let's see how much faster it is. Please, no compiler errors. Yes. And it's gonna be really fast. What? Okay, good enough, good enough. <laughs> see, instead of nine seconds, it's five seconds. Okay, it's roughly half. Anyone see why it's roughly half? Right. Yeah, originally we had, we created the vector using the fill constructor. We made a copy of it. So there's two, we actually made two different vectors, right? Now we only have one, because we made a cop. We made the vector and then we moved it over. So it's roughly half of the time. Make sense? Okay, now in the last uh, two minutes, uh, your task is to write a function called swap. Um, oh, eh, I'll do the follow up at the end. Swap, okay, so I want you to write a function called swap, which takes in two arguments and it, it swaps them. So for example, here we have v1, we have v2, these are gigantic vectors. What should happen after swap is v2 should have um, a lot of ends, and v1 should have a lot of etos. Okay? I don't think I've actually said those two words out loud. 
<laughs> during lecture before, but yes. Okay. All right. Um, how would you write this? Talk with a partner. Think about what you would write. The, the, the code is three lines long. And if you're stuck, pretend you did not know anything about our values. How would you swap the two if you just had to naively swap them? Start with that and then see if you can make it better. All right, all right, so, um, okay, so I can see some of you are really tired, uh, especially the people in the back. So um, let's just quickly write out the code. So if we had to do this uh, without any knowledge of move semantics, what would it look like? Any volunteers? Okay, so um, before we go on, the, um, before I get to that, so you're exactly right, but before I get to that, let me first do the parameters. What should the parameters look like? The two patients are the vectors? OK, but we want to use it for multiple types, right? So we use a template. Template type name T. OK, so we have two, um, we have two uh, let's call it A and T, B. Uh, what should they be passed as? By reference, OK. Just a regular reference? Preferably a const reference, right? OK. Oh, no, actually, no, we, no it can't be const reference because we're swapping them. All right. Cool. All right, and then you mentioned so set a temporary. Okay, so let's say um, how would you declare that? Temp equals a. Okay, but then uh, what's the, the the type of temp? Yeah, t exactly. You can use auto as well. Okay, and then anyone anyone else? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, let's first don't do the move yet because we can add the move later. But a equals b, and then b equals temp. Right? We're just swapping them. This is how you would swap right now, right? If you did patient q, you would write this, right? Right? You, you've all started on patient Q. OK. So um, how do we make this better? Because this, all three lines make a copy. Right? This is a copy. This is a copy. This is a copy. A, B, temp, they're all L or R values. L values, right? They have a name. They have an identity. So these are all L values, which means all three operations are copies. How do we make them moves instead? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, t temp equals std move of a. So a is an l value, but this converts it to an r value. Okay, so std move and then std move. Okay, so this casts everything to an l to an r value, and then when you do the copy, it because it sees that it's an r value, it does the um, it does the move a uh, move constructor for this one and move assignment for these two. Okay. Uh, if I look at the code over here, yeah, this is a quick, a quick simulation, okay? So we're first declaring a new variable temp, or let's call it C, and then I'm casting A to moves, which means when I steal it, I will be stealing this one. And then when I declare this one, I'll be stealing uh, from that one, and then when I steal, I get that one. Okay, I went, that was really fast, we we're out of time, but you can look at the simulation again, it's doing the swap, okay? No extra copies of the array was ever made. Cool, here's the generic swap function. Oh, uh, rule of five. Before it was rule of three, but now you have the two extra functions. Same rule applies. If you declare any one of them, you should declare all of them. And okay, and then yeah, uh, yeah. There's no way we're getting to this, so we're done. All right, thanks everyone. Oh, we're really over time today.